What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Lamplight City. We are back in the flower shop with this lovely little handbook. Um, I wonder. I want to go check this crate that uh, Mr. Johnson was talking about. Tonight's shipment of flowers still sealed by the looks of it. Question is, for how long? Hmm. Fordham, what are you doing? I was gonna check inside this trash can for clues. Miles, in the 15 years we've been partners, how many times have you found something inside a trash can that wasn't garbage? Fair point. Hmm. That reminds me. I should pick up a bouquet for Addie when we're done here. Seems like you've been spending more time with me than with her lately. I sure hope she's not the jealous type. Not of you, my friend. Uh... Okay. He's just pacing back and forth, muttering to himself. Huh. Probably one of the patients from Riverview. Seems like there's more of them on the streets than in the asylum these days. Glad this thing is lit. This isn't really the type of place I'd prefer to be at this time of night. Don't worry, Miles. I've got your back. I'm sure you do. Okay, we'll talk to him again. Fine job you're doing. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Detective. Now, please, let me do my job in peace. All right. So I think we may have to go back upstairs, or we can talk to her. I'll talk to her first, because she's down here, and we haven't told her about the window and the latch. We should probably put the hook back. I have back. a few more questions for you, Mrs. Hambrook. Very well, Detective. If it will help you conclude your investigation faster. Don't be so snotty. Mrs. Hanbrook, were you aware that there's a gap in the frame of the small upstairs window? Is there? I only go up there to check that the window is locked. I've never noticed a gap. Are you suggesting that's how the burglar is entering the store? Maybe. Precisely. I believe the burglar is passing a tool through the gap and using it to unlock the window. Oh, my. But now that we know the method, we're one step closer to catching him. And how do you propose to do that? I'll inform you as soon as I know. Well, I think that's all the information I need for now. All right, detective. I can't remember the exact days that the guy came and did things. I should probably... There. I said I would do that for her. Oh, thank you, detective. That's quite decent of you. My pleasure. Man of your word achievement. See, I told you I would do that. Well, I didn't say anything about doing that, but I mean, she said I should do it, and I did. Okay, so we already know about the window. Unmarked, but if the sp I'll keep my dis. Unmarked. I'll keep. Huh. So how do we do? The window. The wind. My theories confirm. My theory is confirmed. The thief unlocked the. Yeah. So you think this provides a mean? You think we would be able to do something then? So what if I talk to him? Maybe he'll be nope. able to help me out with uh, what's going on. What I'm about to do, whatever the hell it is. Any thoughts on Mrs. Hanbrook's assistant, Trevor? Yes. I feel sorry for him. Why? He seems to enjoy his work. Nah, it's not that. He's obviously smitten with Mrs. Hanbrook. But she won't give him the time of day. Aww. What? You only saw him for a few moments. How in the ether did you get that impression? The way he looked at her, the way he spoke when he confessed to contacting the police. Shall I go on? No, that's fine. I see what you mean. <laughs> really, Miles? You'd be surprised what you can learn from people if you just look at them. Why bother doing that when I've got you to do it for me? Uh, yeah. Right. Based on what we've been told in our experiment, I can only conclude that our burglar is using the upstairs window to get into the shop. So, what do you propose we do about it? We hide in the crates. It's I'm happened repeatedly over the past three weeks, on one of the delivery nights. Since it has yet to occur this week, and today is Friday, logic dictates it should be tonight. So, we settle in and wait to see if the burglar returns? Catch him in the act? Exactly. Yeah. It's our best chance of solving this before the trail goes cold. <sighs> And I was really looking forward to getting that drink at the Angel tonight, too. I know, but it's as you said yourself. 
There'll be plenty of other opportunities. Besides, forbearance is good for the soul. Spoken like someone who truly has no idea how to have any fun. I'm sure I'll get the hang of it one of these days, especially with your expert tutelage. Okay, let's go have a chat with Mrs. Hambrook. I'm sure she'll be delighted to know we're spending the night. Yeah, she will. She loves me and... Damn, I forgot to bring my deck of cards again. At least it's quiet up here. I'm surprised we didn't go deaf after the last time we did this. What? I said... Oh, right. Your sense of humor remains on point. <laughs> Miles, have you ever considered leaving all this behind? What, you mean quitting the Force? The Force, the city, going off and seeing what else is out there, you know? I'd miss it too much. Wouldn't you? I was thinking I might visit Harley out west. She makes it sound like a dream in her letters. Wide open spaces, fresh air. I know I'm a city boy and would probably miss New Britannia's filth and squalor after a week, but... You should do it. A change of scenery never hurt anyone. Plus, it's much easier for you than it is for me. I've got a family to consider, after all. Ah, uh, right. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean it like that, Bill. It's just... Shh. I think I heard something. Oh, here it comes. Oh! Oh, no! Bill? <laughs> ah, crap. Stop! Police! Damn it! He's got up the fire escape. We can corner him on the roof. Stay close and keep me covered. Gotcha. Pick up his hat. Bill! Stay back, officer. I've got a knife. Ready your pistol for him. But you're too close! I trust you, Miles. Your pistol, now! There's really no need for this, officer. I respect your desire to uphold justice. Mine is more important. If you let me go, I won't come back. And we can all forget this ever happened. Uh -oh. Listen to this lunatic, Miles. Take your shot before things get worse. Because mm. you know what's going to happen. We take the shot, he drops him. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Bill! Oh, God! I am so sorry, my friend. I am so, so sorry. <laughs> We're a horrible shot. When was the last time we used the damn gun? <laughs> Three months later. Probably drunk. <laughs> that was messed up, man. Miles, wake up! Your house is on fire! Huh? What? You see, I told you it was funnier when I did it to you. Yes. Yes. Hilarious. What's the matter? Have a rough night? Mmm. Overdid it on the soporific. Why do I feel like I've had this conversation before? I'm just glad you're in the mood to converse again. Seriously, you took so much of that snake oil last night, I was starting to think you wanted me quiet for good. Uh... It's no personal slight. I just need some quiet time, or I'll go insane. I get it. We all need our space. I know it's not easy, but there's really no need. Not easy? Oh. Bill, I've been hearing your voice since you died. You don't shut up unless I take that accursed medicine. I'd say that qualifies as a bit more than not easy. Yeah, well, how do you think I feel? You think I enjoy being trapped here, listening to you whine about how hard your life's become? You at least still have yours. Ooh. If you're just as miserable, why don't you just go away and leave me in peace? Believe me, I wish I knew how. But the bottom fact is, you're stuck with me. So you can either keep living this way and ruin your life even more than you already have, or you can do as I've told you and try to figure out a way to let me move on. Mm. Right. For the thousandth time, you want me to find the burglar from the flower shop. Yes, exactly. I still don't get how that's going to help. I can understand your confusion, considering it was you who killed me. <laughs> the point remains. You wouldn't have been in that situation in the first place if not for him. Once the criminal has been caught and is in custody, 
We'll both get what we want. Uh, a decent night's sleep? More than that, you'll have that elusive thing you always wanted to give others. Closure. You do realize the trail's pretty much frozen at this point. Our man has seemingly vanished into the ether. That's no excuse not to keep trying. I know the cases Upton's been giving you these past few months haven't been the most thrilling, but they've at least kept you active. So just keep at it. Something has to turn up eventually. Unless, of course, you want to wind up in Riverview Asylum. And if that happens, I'm really not going to keep quiet. <laughs> Fine. Good man. Now, I suggest you stop talking to thin air, or Adelaide's going to start wondering if you've gone mental. Or just maybe she'll stop wondering. <laughs> Very funny. All right, what do we got here? Remember before you started taking that medicine and you could actually read a book for more than 10 minutes before falling asleep? You were a lot more fun to talk to back then. That's a fun little apparatus Adelaide got you. Very soothing. Watching it spin long enough puts me right to sleep. I'd say that's really more the soporifics doing. I always liked that self-portrait of Adelaide's mother. Even if the eyes do always follow you around the room. <laughs> uh, wouldn't you say it's time for a change of clothes, Miles? You've been wearing that coat for who knows how long. So? Addy gave it to me. Besides, it gives me character. Right. Brooding detective in a long black coat. That's never been seen before. What are you talking about, Bill? Never mind. <laughs> Pretty. But I'm glad I don't have a sense of smell anymore. Don't worry, Miles. I don't watch when you and Adelaide are having your private time. <laughs> it would be nice if you didn't spend the whole time humming. I thought you appreciated some romantic music. <laughs> oh. Cozy little winter getaway. That would be a welcome change from the winters in this city. Hey. Okay. Well, we can actually open that one. What's in there? Miles, care to explain what you're doing? Just checking to make sure everything that needs to be in here still is. Right. If you start taking that stuff during the day, you're really going to have problems. Oh. Uh. It's admirable just how organized Adelaide is. Maybe someday the same can be said about you. <laughs> <laughs> that poster brings back some memories. That's from around the time you two met, isn't it? Yes. Back when Addie was singing at the Angel. Uh, okay. I think we're pretty good. Let's go. I'm going to see Adelaide. Hello, my love. Well, look who's awake. Ready to rejoin the living? Very much so. You were talking in your sleep again. Did I say anything interesting? Do you ever? <laughs> you have to admit, she's got you there. How are you feeling? A touch groggy. I think I took a bit too much of the soporific last night. That's what I thought. When you went for your after-lunch nap, you'd barely gotten breakfast down. I saved you some bread and cheese if you're hungry. Thank you, but I haven't got much of an appetite. You really should regulate your doses more carefully, love. I'm sure dull senses and an empty stomach aren't much help to your work. Mm, that's true. By the way, a message arrived via courier for you this morning. I put it on the table along with today's newspaper. Thank you, dear. Ah, oh, she's so nice. Remembering the HMS of the Gaia, Gascogne, Grand Dame dies, Aethericity, the, uh, it's real and it's coming, says scientists. Second Bazaar, murder police baffles. Or baffles police, murder police. All right. A big case is coming in, which I think is, will interest you. Meet me at the Roven Coffee House for more details. See Upton. Hmm. Upton says she's got a big case for me. Does she go into any more detail than that? No, but then you know Upton. Always on a need-to-know basis. Especially since she's been giving me these cases under the table. To be fair, they haven't exactly been anything of note. True, but she's still sticking her neck out for me. I can understand why she's so secretive about it. I think she just misses having you around the station. Poor Connie. With you quitting and me dying, she must be bored stiff at work. Anyway, I'm supposed to meet her at the ruined coffee house. That can't be right. It's not like Constance to make mistakes. She must have gotten in somehow. Guess I'll head over there and see what she's got then. Woohoo, things to do. You remember how much time Adelaide had to spend convincing you to sit for this? 
At least these days, with ferrotype tech advancing the way it is, these portraits can be done in just a matter of minutes. Nice. Okay, I don't think I'm going to look over everything that's in here, because it just seems, uh... Bowlingworth Ale, my favorite! And a nice souvenir from the Angel. You really ought to go back there someday. Maybe. It's been so long since you used that desk. Did you even notice when Adelaide got rid of the chair? Yeah, and I obviously can't talk, because if I do... Ah, the Havisham case. Our first time out as partners. First in a long line of successful cases. It's nice to have a memory of the good old days. I concur. All right, let's leave. We're going to go to the ruin. I'm heading out for now. I wish you'd let me fix your hair before you go out like that. It'll be fine. This way nobody bothers to approach me because I look like I'm nuts. Ruin coffee house. Uh, this lovely lady is the one we're ah, meeting. Ruin coffee house. Worst Java in Lamplight City, but there's no better place to overhear all the rumors and gossip in town. Just make sure you don't get too close to the other patrons. Discretion was never your forte. Nice. If it isn't my old friend, up to no good. Hello, Fordham. It's good to see you. <laughs> How did you get them to let you in here? It's rather simple, really. The owner and I have an understanding. He pretends women are allowed in coffee houses, and I don't report his unsavory business practices to Chief Snelling. Sounds like a good deal. What sort of unsavory business practices are we talking about? Oh, we haven't got time to get into that now. But take some advice. Don't order anything that isn't water. Um... I got your message. What's going on? It's time for you to join the big boys again, Fordham. Your days of finding lost cats are over. So stop teasing me and tell me what it is already. Do you know Madame Laura Dupre? Yeah. Laura Dupre? She's one of those Gascon Grand Dames, isn't she? That's right. I'm surprised you've heard of her. I didn't think you cared about those types of people. Well, I, read the I don't, but Adelaide has several of them as clients. She gets paid to pretend to care about their lives, and I get to hear the sort of details. Madame Dupre died the day before yesterday. Her funeral was held this morning. My condolences. Oh. But halfway through the service, the mourners heard a loud knocking coming from inside her coffin. <laughs> what? She wasn't dead? Apparently not. Nearly interred alive, although her doctor swears she had no pulse. Dupre's son Andrew was quick to suspect foul play. He accused a man named Albert Martin, and the police arrested him. So where do I come in? Sounds like the case has already been solved. I strongly suspect that Martin is innocent. Especially considering the talk of him having used black magic on Dupre. The police feel they have enough evidence to convict, so they're not bothering to investigate any further. You're Ooh. going to look into it and see if I'm right. Then find the person who was really behind this. Uh... Has Madame Dupre recovered from her ordeal? I'm afraid not. Apparently she's been catatonic since they pulled her out of the coffin. How unfortunate. If you'd like to question Mr. Martin, he's being held at the Bow Street Jail. Or you could take a look around his house. It's at 451 Compton Street in Worcester. And the Dupre home? That's at Emmeline and Comtesse, right across from the old Angeline convent. It's also possible you might run into the police during your investigation, since they're technically still on the case. Thanks for the warning. Ah, uh, okay. Was there anything you wanted to talk about before you get started? Uh, yes. Yes, actually. I had a couple of questions. Let's hear them, then. You got it. Don't suppose there have been any developments regarding Bill's murder? Unfortunately not. The department hasn't exactly been focusing on that case as a, priori as a priority. The general attitude is that it was an accident. Bill died an honorable death in the line of duty. Would have been nice if they bothered saying that at the funeral. <laughs> and of course there are still those who blame you for his death, Snelling being the first and foremost. But the man who really caused Bill's death is still out there. Yes, I know, but it looks like you're on your own if you want to find him. My hands are tied. I can only ask around so much before the higher-ups get suspicious. Just don't give up. New Britannia may be a big city, but the criminal world is surprisingly close-knit. If you find any connections or leads during your other cases, be sure and let me know. I'll do the same if I find anything out. See, 
She has a priority stream. You could learn a lot from up there. <laughs> and I wanted to go over the Okay. What What do you know about Only what I've read about her in She's been married thrice, which I can empathize with, and she's extremely rich, which I can't. <laughs> what makes you think this Martin fellow is innocent? The fact that the only evidence is the word of Dupre's son. I've seen this sort of thing thousands of times, and I'm sure you did too. They're just looking for a scapegoat. You're the only person I know who can put it right. Upton's intentions are noble, but she has to realize that this is just a drop in the ocean. That's enough about the case for now. Mm. Okay. Done. That's it. I th then you'd better get back to it. I will. Well, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to help you find the flower shop burglar, but I suppose freeing an innocent man is a worthy diversion. You got it. And I'm going to divert you guys till the next episode. So we're going to continue on. We're going to see how this whole thing connects together. And I think I'm starting to get it that how we killed our partner in the previous episode that our beginning of this episode. I don't know. Whenever we killed him, it was this episode. And um, no matter what choice, I think he would have died because now we have to find through the next cases that we get the connection to the flower shop burglar. And eventually, we're going to be able to figure out what the problem was and why we're connected and all that kind of thing. Which that dude, the shadow figure on the top, did say that his purpose was greater than ours. So that might be the reason why. Maybe he put a curse on me or something like that. So we will have to find out more in the next episode. I hope you're enjoying it. And I will see you all next time. Take care.